Good morning. Welcome. <laughs> I know it's time change Sunday. I, I, I know. I get it. I get it. You should have been the early service. Good morning. Yeah. All right. Welcome again. Good to have you in God's house, even if it is Time Change Sunday. And it's so much easier to fall back than spring forward. Anyone besides myself there? Oh, my goodness. So, um, but lots of great things happening. I would just remind you that we keep doing the Wednesday evening Dining with Jesus series. Wednesday evenings at 6.30, the dinner and the service are mixed together. Had some great meals and some great themes with Dining with Jesus. We often think about Jesus in the with um, multitudes or teaching and miracles, but Jesus around the dinner table is really an interesting and enriching experience. And then uh, coming up, we have Palm Sunday, which is a great Sunday. Uh, we have our cantata, Living Hope. The choir has been practicing. It's going to be fabulous. And it's also Bring a Friend Sunday. Were that not enough? It is also Pancake Brunch Sunday. So following the worship service, we have Pancake Brunch in the Fellowship Hall, and that is to support Missions. So lots of great things going on. Also, all of Holy Week, we have Monday, Thursday services, Good Friday services. We've got a community Easter egg hunt on Saturday. And then, of course, a sunrise service, another Easter egg hunt, and a traditional uh, service. So great way to inspire and to invite others to have their lives touched by the Lord and the love of our church family. With that, I, I invite you. Yes. Do you need this? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if time change Sunday is the best time to tell it, but there is a there is a food sheet for uh, sunrise service, and yes, uh, for the, there is a there is a little brunch or breakfast after that. So uh, you're invited to bring some breakfast things so we can enjoy after our sunrise service. We can enjoy breakfast together. So thank you very much. With that, we join together in our call to worship, which is from Psalm 62. It's a great song. Psalm, find rest, O my soul, in God alone. God alone is my rock and my salvation. My salvation and my honor depend on God. Trust in him at all times, O people. God is good all the time. Praise the Lord. We invite you to stand and join in worship and music.
going up, guys. Will the children come forward for the children's sermon? Come on up. I could be. You got a Bible? It was yours? She's borrowing it. I love it. You guys want to sit down in front of me? It has big pages. I love it. I love that you're excited about your Bible. Awesome. Has... That's right. It has awesome stories in it, too. How are all of you guys this morning? Good? Oh, wait. Let's try that again. How are we this morning? Good. And how about the having to get up one hour early? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Which is that? Ooh, lots of thumbs down? Yeah. I was kind of like thumb in the middle. Really? Do we have to get up early? But guess what? High fives to all of you because you guys got up for God. Good job on that. I love it. Now, this morning, what we're going to talk about is something, is something called lost and found. So you've lost something, and then you find it. That is, that's right. Yeah. You have a lost and found bin at your school? That is exactly what I'm talking about. So if you ever, like, raise your hand if you've ever lost something. Raise your hand if you lose things a lot. Oh, oh, those went up even higher. Okay. I know when my grandkids come to our house, every time they come, they at least leave one thing. So they've lost it for just an itty-bitty time. Now, what we're going to talk about, though, is lost and found. I'm going to tell you a story. So for my job, I am in my car a lot and I'm driving all around our community and the surrounding counties. And you know how when you go into a different subdivision, when you go into a subdivision, you see these like telephone poles or utility poles. And on those poles, a lot of times, you'll see signs that'll say garage sale or something's for, for sale. But guess what I saw the other day? You see this sign? Can you see it? It says... Please help us find, can you see it? Our lost what? What is that? A, puppy. a little puppy. Look at him. Is he not adorable? He's so cute. Like, look at his eyes. And it says, please help us find our lost dog, Smokey. And then it says, there's a reward for $25. Wow, we, wow, we is right. And if you find that dog, the family will give you the $25. Look at his eyes. Yes. And then it says, call this number. So this means a family has lost their puppy, and they need help to find their puppy. Well, guess what? When I... We lost Owen. We lost Lefty Pass. Yep, sometimes dogs pass away too and they go to heaven. Well, when we, when I read this sign, guess what my heart felt? Because I looked, look at Smokey's face. I felt a little sad. I thought, oh, the poor family, they need their doggy back, right? Yeah. And then I thought, oh, poor little Smokey, because it's cold outside and who's feeding Who's feeding Smokey? So then I felt hope. Oh gosh, I hope somebody finds Smokey and calls that number. And then guess what else I did? I said a little prayer. And I thought, dear Lord, please help Smokey go back to his home, please. And hopefully he will be found. So Smokey is lost. And then we're praying for Smokey to be found. Well, in our children's sermon this morning, our, and you brought your Bible up, and I brought a Bible up as well, we are looking at the book of Luke. Can you guys say that with me? Luke. And in the book of Luke, oh, yep, you got it in your hands. Good job, my dear. 
Luke chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. And this is what this says. Put your thinking caps on. It says, But Father said to his servants, Quick! Oops, can you hand me that, please? I'm so sorry. I lost my paper. It says, Quick! Bring the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and bring a fattened calf so that we can kill it and have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. So let's begin to celebrate. So I'm going to tell you a story. Come a little closer to me so that you can hear good. So I'm going to tell you a story about a story that God had and had happened. And we want to make sure that all of us listen very closely to this because it could happen to you too. So in this story, it talks about a man who had joy with his two sons. And he had a younger son and an older son. And his older son wanted to stay home and help the family work at their home. And then he had a younger son that went to his daddy and said, Daddy, I would like to have all my inheritance right now. And what that means with inheritance is, is when your mom or your dad pass away, a lot of times their money and their belongings go to their children. And his youngest son said, before you die, I want my inheritance now. And he wanted to take that money and go out and go into the world and have some fun. So he went out and had some fun. And guess what? After a short amount of time, he had wasted all his money. He was living kind of like a wild life. And guess what else? He didn't even have enough money to feed himself. I have, I have money with my, my grandpa. From your, yeah. Yeah, we all save our money, yes. So he didn't even have one coin to buy himself any food. So he thought, I better get a job. And guess what? The only job that he could get was feeding pigs. And you know what he was having to feed pigs? It's called slop. And when you and I eat our dinner, and if we have anything left on our plate, we throw that in the trash sometimes, or we give it to the cat or the dog. Well, those leftover food Dad, is what... Dad, Dad, give us, Dad gives the, the leftover food to our dogs. To your dogs, exactly. Well, as he was feeding that slop, the young boy, to the piggies, he was looking at that food, and he was hungry. And he said, these pigs are eating better than me. I don't even have any food to eat right now. And he began to think, oh, my goodness. Maybe I need to go back home. Maybe I need to go back to my father and ask him to be one of his servants. So that's what he did. It's okay. That's what he did. He went back home to his father's house. And guess where he went? He went down a big long lane. And guess who was watching him come down that big long lane? His father. His father would wait for his young son every day to walk down that lane. And when he saw his son, guess what his father did? He jumped up and he started running to his son with his arms out wide. And he went up to his son and he kissed him and he hugged him and wrapped his arms around him. And he was so happy that his son had returned. And guess what he gave him besides hugs and kisses? He gave him a beautiful robe, just like this robe. And he wrapped that robe around his body to keep him warm. And then he gave him a ring, and he put it on his finger. And he said, everyone, let's get together and have a big party for our son and have a feast. Servants, start preparing the food. My son was dead, and now he is alive. Now listen to this part. My son was lost and now he is found. So isn't that amazing? The dad knew that his young son wasted all of his money by just having fun, and he didn't have any more money. 
But was the dad mad? No. no. Was the dad happy? Yes. Because the dad forgave his son. He loved his son so much that he didn't care. All he cared about was that he was found. So if you guys have lost something before, raise your hand. You lost something before, yeah? Like I've lost a necklace before and some jewelry, and then all of a sudden I get into my coat pocket and I go, oh, there's my jewelry. And I am so happy that I found it. And you guys have probably lost a stuffed animal before. Maybe you've lost your special blankie. But guess what? Then you find it, and it makes you happy. So, you lost your Spider-Man, and then you found it in the lost and found. See, I love that, and that made you happy, right? Well, guess what? All of us, you, and you, and you, and you, and me, and everyone out here are going to get lost from God. Sometimes we are going to lose our way. But guess what? With the help of God and the help of Jesus, we will be found. Just like Smokey will be found. And if we pray, God will help us get back. And no matter what, when we do get lost, no matter what, guess who forgives us? God. Because Jesus died for us, and because of that, we are always forgiven, no matter what. God, God can give us back to our mom and dad. God will get you back to your mom and dad. That is so true. So remember, if you ever get lost, which you will, in your way, God is always there to bring you back. Let us pray. Let's close our hand, eyes and bow our heads. Dear Lord... Help us with your unfailing love. We are so thankful that even when we stray away, that we are welcomed back into your home with open arms. Help us always to be found. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I get something? Morning. This morning's reading is um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. It is in um, the New Testament in the Pew Bibles on page 287. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. This ends the New Testament reading this morning. Well, thank you, Luann and Tamara and all of our music folks, everyone making worship possible this morning. We continue 
our series in the footsteps of Jesus in the Gospel of Luke. And we are in Luke chapter 9, the mountaintop moment of which Peter writes about that Luann just read from 2 Peter 1. We're in Luke 9, 28 through 36. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to them, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, this morning we're looking at mountaintop moments. I don't know if you've had a mountaintop moment in your life before, maybe literally or figuratively. Uh, in August of last year, I went out to Seattle, went out for a conference, and it was a, it was a busy time. It had been a busy summer, but I had scheduled Sunday that I would rent a car and go to Mount Rainier, to the National Park, and drive as far as I could up, not to the summit, but you know, as far as I could uh, to the National Park. And so I'd rented this Toyota Corolla, and uh, it was the economy uh, option. So I uh, went from the hotel, I walked, it was quite a ways, it was about a, you know, a little over a mile or whatever, and I finally got to the Enterprise rental car, and as I'm walking into the parking lot, this guy comes up to meet me, nice guy, and uh, he asked my name, I gave him my name, and he said, would you like a free upgrade to a Porsche? <laughs> I said, did you say free and Porsche? And he said, yeah. I, I said, wow, Corolla or Carrera? Let me think about that. He said, what could go wrong, right? So I said, are you sure it's free? He said, sure, no problem. So, man, I didn't know this guy from Adam. So there I am. I, I couldn't believe it. Took the Porsche out. And, uh, and, and then I also found out that the main highway had been closed because they were doing some work on it. So I'd take the secondary road all the way to Mount Rainier. And it was just a beautiful day. And I had this Porsche and it was just glorious, man. Stopped to this diner and went as far as you can drive up there to Lake, uh, the Reflection Lake and all this. And it was just, it was stunning. It was really a time that uplifted me personally, spiritually. It was a great driving experience too. But, we have these mountaintop moments in life, and sometimes it's just a mountaintop, and maybe it's an inspirational moment. Sometimes it's very spiritual. You know, for me, that, that was very spiritual as well as it was just everything just uh, inspired me. Uh, when I was over in the Holy Land, uh, we took a, a time when we went from Israel down to Egypt, and we stopped at St. Catherine's Monastery, which is at the, about halfway up to Mount Sinai, and it was early in the morning, and these young people and older people, people from all over the world, had got up at three or four in the morning, and they hiked all the way to the summit of Mount Sinai to see the sunrise over Mount Sinai. And it was interesting to see them come down. It, not just, you know, it was every faith, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, people, non-faith, older, younger, uh, different races, different places, coming down and talking about that. So energizing a mountaintop moment. Well, this morning, Jesus has a mountaintop moment, the Mount of Transfiguration. And that's the actual mount right there. We know where it is. There's actually a, a chapel on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration today. And so I invite you to walk back into the story. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John with him to the mountaintop. And there as he's praying, Luke always emphasizes that prayer is a big part of the life of Jesus and should be part of the life of every believer. And, and in that moment, we're told that Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus. Now, we're told that the disciples were a little sleepy. It must have been time change Sunday. <laughs> 
they were a little clouded, really. And they didn't really know what was going on at first. You know, who would? Now, there's Moses and Elijah in this cloud. And, uh, and, and Jesus, in that moment, is being inspired and nurtured. We're told that Moses and Elijah were talking to Jesus. It must have been like a, a pep talk, right? You know, like a coaching moment, like you, you get them. And, uh, it doesn't get much better than Moses and Elijah and Jesus. And I like to think that they were praying with Jesus for what lay ahead. And Jesus had that mountaintop moment. And I think in my own life, I've had mountaintop moments. Sometimes it's a weekend retreat. It was really a mountaintop moment. I went to Mount Rainier, a beautiful time. And other moments, when Mount Sinai, the same kind of thing. And you may have had that moment too. It may just have been in your, your prayer time in the morning where God just came in a special way or may have been on a vacation, some kind of a, a retreat or whatever. But mountaintop moments are important because they inspire us, they uplift us, and they guide us in lots of ways. But here's the thing about the mountaintop moment is it doesn't last forever. We'd like it to last forever, right? But the mountaintop moments don't last forever. And Jesus knew that. He knew this was a moment to be inspired, to be directed, to be guided, to be prayed for, to go before. Peter didn't quite understand that yet, right? Peter said, he kind of blurted out. Luke says he didn't know what he was saying in parentheses. (laughs) <laughs> which means, like Peter sometimes did, he talked before he thought. Lots of us are that way, right? And Peter said, let's just make three cabins here, and we'll just stay here on the mountaintop, which honestly, we kind of criticized Peter maybe for that, but when you think about it, that's the natural response to stay on the mountaintop. Now, Jesus knew that he couldn't stay on the mountaintop, right? He knew that his destiny lie below, but Jesus leaned into that moment and heard the Father's voice speak, and I think it's beautiful. This is my beloved Son whom I've chosen. Listen to him. This is my beloved Son whom I've chosen. Listen to him. And what does that remind you of? Well, Jesus' baptism. Almost the exact same words that were spoken when Jesus was called into ministry with the Holy Spirit as uh, alighted on him in the form of a dove. And the Spirit uh, spoke, the Father whispered, this is my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. That God's love, God's calling is there. That God had a calling and a mission and ministry for Jesus. And God was going to help him complete that. And I think that's so powerful for Jesus was hearing again the affirmation of the Father, the Father's love, the Father's calling. There was a plan and purpose, and God had the power to see him through. And here's the important thing I think about all that, which is that mountain highs are for valley lows. Mountain highs are for valley lows. Jesus knew that he couldn't stay on the mountain because why? He had to descend from the mountain to head towards Jerusalem, where he would give his life on Calvary to pay the price for our sins and shortcomings, on that first Good Friday and be raised on that first Easter morning to complete God's plan of redemption. It would not be an easy task. In fact, it would be the most hardest mission and task anyone has ever faced in a life. So Jesus needed that mountaintop moment to be affirmed by the voice of the Father, to be maybe talked to and prayed over by Moses and Elijah. And We all need the mountain high for the valley low. Peter would need the mountain high for the valley low, even though he didn't realize it at the time. But later on, as Peter writes these words that Luann read, and I want to read them again to you, Peter is writing, not only affirming this moment that happened to Jesus, but I think also writing to people who were undergoing persecution and challenge and difficulty at that time. And Peter himself was undergoing challenge. And so Peter looks back to the mountain and calls that forward to the people that he's writing to. He says this, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I'm well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with them on the holy mountain. Wow. So powerful and amazing and beautiful. And it's interesting because the people 
that Jesus was with on the mountaintop. Elijah and Moses both have their mountaintop moments, didn't they? Elijah, you'll recall, of course, was on the mountaintop after he had this breakdown, was called to the mountain of God. We talked about that last week where Elijah sort of found himself in the cave and had this breakdown. And then there's this uh, wind that was outside the cave and uh, shook the earth. And God wasn't in the wind, we're told. And there was an earthquake uh, shaking the mountain and God wasn't in the earthquake. And then there was the fire outside the cave and we're told God wasn't in the fire. And then what happened? The still small voice of God whispered for Elijah to come out and he was renewed in his calling, would go forward from there to uh, pick out a successor in the form of Elisha, would mentor him along the way. But Elijah needed that mountaintop moment sort of as a, as a moment of transition for his older life and into the new life where he would mentor Elisha. Moses, of course, had his mountaintop moment, right? On Sinai, where he went up there for the Ten Commandments, saw uh, the presence of God in one of the most powerful ways that anyone has ever seen. Moses needed that mountaintop moment in order to guide the people through uh, wandering in the wilderness and to face uh, the promised land. And then Moses was called to the mountain again uh, when God was to take him home to his eternal glory. You and I have mountaintop moments. Maybe they're not as powerful as this. Martin Luther King Jr. had a mountaintop moment, you recall, uh, just preceding the time that he was assassinated. And he said he'd been to the mountain and he wasn't fearing anyone. He knew God's call. He knew there was a long ways to go for work with justice and equality. We still have uh, work to do, but God had that mountaintop moment for him. Where are you in your journey of life? If you're in a moment of mountaintop, enjoy that mountaintop moment, right? But realize it isn't going to last forever. God is empowering you so you can go forward to love and serve in the mission that God has called you to in the valley below. If you're in the valley now, going through challenge and adversity, whatever that is, then recall the mountaintop moment where God spoke to you, where God whispered to you. It may not be a literal mountain, but there is a, maybe that moment where God whispered to you and pulled on your heart in a way that God's love was made manifest in a powerful and real and tangible moment. Maybe it's a worship moment. Maybe it's just in your morning devotions or literally you took a drive to the mountain and suddenly God was there in a special way or retreat moment. And let that empower you for whatever you're facing in that moment. And you might be like Jesus, right? We don't think Jesus summoned Moses and Elijah, but God the Father provided them there. Sometimes you need two or three brothers or sisters that come around you, that pray, that acknowledge your call, affirm your call, strengthen you, pray for you so that you're ready to go forward to whatever lies below. Sometimes that mountaintop moment has been in a hospital room as I've gone in and shared Holy Communion with folks who are going to surgery or facing uh, difficult news. And God was there in a very real and tangible way. Or sometimes that mountaintop moment's just been when someone came during the week and prayed in the sanctuary and, and they felt God's healing presence in their, in their soul and their emotions and, and sometimes in their physical being too. God calls us in powerful ways. And I think just like Jesus, even like Peter, James, and John, who would need this later on, God will call us to mountaintop moments, and we should enjoy the moment. But realize we can't stay there forever. Realize that God is empowering us, speaking to us, directing us, so that we can go forward with our mission and ministry, empowered to love and serve God and love and serve others. And realize those mountaintop highs or for valley lows. And when you see a brother or sister that's needing someone to speak to them and affirm them, then come around them and pray with them and, and speak words of affirmation. I want to close with a story that I, I love, which by Robert Fulgham, who wrote, Everything I Ever Needed to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten. I don't know if you ever read that book. It's a great one. <laughs> I needed more than what I learned in kindergarten. But anyway, some of the most profound truths are in kindergarten. Uh, but he records a time that he was uh, on this drive in Idaho, rural Idaho, and he stopped in a small town, just sort of a fortuitous thing. And he went into this grocery store, just sort of an old grocery store. And uh, as he was checking out, after he got just a few things for his drive, uh, he looked up and there was a revolving door, which he was not really wild about. 
and it was an older <laughs> revolving door. And he looked for another exit, but he realized that over the door it says, you have to go in to go out. So you got to go in to go out. You got to go through the revolving door to get out. And as he thought about that, you have to go in to go out. He's sort of in a spiritual moment in his life. He was thinking about that and saying, you know what? And really in order to go out into the world, we need to allow God's spirit to speak in us. You have to go in in order to go out. And that in is often a mountaintop moment where God speaks to us, pulls on our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit in order to go out. And then the second thing was related to that. As he gave the checkout person his money, uh, she rang the register and the change came out on one of those old fashioned steel kinds of things where the change there. And it said above that, there's a little note that says, please accept your change and take it with you. He thought about that and he said, you know what? That's so true. Please accept your change and take it with you. When we have a mountaintop moment where God speaks to us, we're changed. And in order to make that change really what God wants us to be, light in the world, we need to take that change with us from the mountaintop down to the valley below. Jesus was empowered so he could fulfill his mission in the valley below, which was Jerusalem, where he'd give his, his life on Calvary to pay the price for our sins and shortcomings and be raised into life that first Easter. You and I don't have a mission quite like that, but we do have a mission. We're often called to the mountain to have our lives changed, that we can go and serve others, whatever that calling is. It's different for each and every one of us, but God empowers us to take that change with us. And as we take that change with us in the world, you and I become salt and light in the world. Today, I challenge all of us, if we're on the mountaintop, to enjoy that mountaintop moment, but realize that we can't stay there. God is calling us to serve us in the valley below, and God will be faithful to see us through. Amen? Will you join me in prayer? Lord, we thank you for your word as it speaks to our hearts and lives. We're thankful for this moment where Jesus was empowered and renewed on the mountaintop, that he can go forward and to fulfill the mission God had before him. But we're also aware, just like Peter, James, and John, that you empower each and every one of us in moments, Lord, that we can go forward to serve as well in the mountain, in the mountain valley below. So, Lord, help us to be touched and empowered that we can serve others through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all God's people said, Amen.
I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for today, your day when we come into your house. We can lay down our burdens and all that weighs us down and look up to you, our maker, our creator, the one who loves us so much that you not only created us, you sent Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to come among us, to share our lives and to show us the way of love. And in the greatest gift of love of all times, you lay down your life on Calvary that we would know your forgiveness and grace. And then we're raised to new life that we would know the power of the resurrection and the promise of eternal life. Help us to open our hearts and lives to your amazing grace and love. To allow your Holy Spirit to transform our lives and to share the good news of your love to others near and far. We pray your blessing and protection on all of our families, Lord, and our church as we continue in our Lenten journey towards Jerusalem, where you lay down your life on Calvary, and to Easter morning as we celebrate again the good news of the resurrection. We pray for every person with needs this morning, Lord. We especially lift up all those who've lost loved ones and pray that your peace and love and gentle strength would be with them in a very special way that transcends all understanding. We pray for all those who need a healing touch, whether in the hospital or nursing home at home or here in our midst this morning. Continue to lead and guide and bless the medical staff caring for them as well as family caregivers. But we also pray that you are a great physician as well as Savior and Lord would touch and strengthen them with your healing presence in body, mind, and spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to strengthen us, to renew us in our Lenten journey. We pray, Lord, that you bless all of our mission ministries and all of our Holy Week services, that we can be a light in the darkness for you. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Gracious God, bless these gifts that we give back to you for abundance you've blessed our lives with. Bless all of our time, treasure, and talent that we can be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Go forth the blessing of Almighty God, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and the peace and power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God bless you, and have a great week.